Welcome back to Lost Us Channel. My name is Anton Bielsen. I'm a criminal defense attorney in the Southern District of California here in San Diego. In this video, we're going to discuss a California case that deals with inventory searches and automobile exceptions to the warrant requirement under the Fourth Amendment when police are searching a vehicle. Now, as you can recall, in order for the police to rely on automobile exception to the warrant requirement, they still need to have probable cause that incriminating evidence will be found inside the vehicle. But following legalization of cannabis and marijuana in California in 2016, the California law explicitly states that cannabis and related products are no longer considered contraband and their possession or use cannot be construed as basis for search, detention, or arrest. Meaning, what happens if the officer pats you down and finds marijuana? Can that be used as probable cause for the automobile exception in order to search your vehicle? Well, this case answers that question. In this video, we'll be discussing a 2019 case from the Court of Appeals for the State of California. And the case is The People versus Lee. We begin to discuss this case with the facts. In late August 2017, Mr. Lee, with his passenger, were driving a gold Cadillac. Two officers pulled over the vehicle for possible violation of vehicular code namely that the vehicle had tinted windows and did not have a front license plate. When the officer approached Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee told the officer that he did not have a driver's license when the officer asked for the driver's license and registration. So for officer safety and to make sure that Mr. Lee did not have any identification, he asked Mr. Lee to step out of the vehicle for pat-down. During that pat-down search, the officer found small amounts of marijuana and a wad of cash on Mr. Lee. At that point, the officer made a decision to handcuff Mr. Lee. And during the process, the officer testified that Mr. Lee tensed up. From that point on, the officer took Mr. Lee to the patrol vehicle that was parked behind Mr. Lee's Cadillac. On the way there, he asked Mr. Lee if there was anything illegal in the vehicle. And Mr. Lee said no. The officer then explained to Mr. Lee that the vehicle, the Cadillac, will be impounded because it turned out that neither Mr. Lee nor the passenger had a valid driver's license. They were both suspended. Mr. Lee then offered to the officer that he could have someone call and get that someone ready to pick up the vehicle from the parking lot. The officer told Mr. Lee that that's not how it's going to work, in quotes. Then the officer asked for the third time whether the vehicle contained anything illegal. And Mr. Lee again said there was nothing illegal in the vehicle. Mr. Lee was placed in the patrol car and the officer went back to the Cadillac to search it. He looked in the front seats, in the front area, the back seats, the back area. At some point, the officer even took the bench seat up from the back seat in order to look underneath in the area below that bench seat. He found nothing there, but when the seat was placed back, the officer then pulled down the middle armrest and he noticed that there was access to the trunk. And with his flashlight, he could see that there was a backpack in the trunk. The officer put his hand through that 
passageway to the trunk, took the backpack out of the trunk, and in the backpack he found a firearm and a large sum of money. Then he went back to Mr. Lee and asked him whether Mr. Lee had a key to the glove compartment because the glove compartment was locked. Mr. Lee said that he did not. The two officers then talked to each other and they figured out and found out that the passenger had the key. So they got the key, they opened the glove compartment and in that glove compartment they found a two egg size plastic baggies containing white powdery substance and that powdered substance was roughly 56 grams or two ounces of cocaine and they also found other plastic baggies kitchen knife and a small glass container the officer on the scene never filled out the impound form which is required by the police department instead an officer later filled one out but the original officer never assisted that second one in filling out that form. Mr. Lee was charged with transportation of cocaine, not for personal use, while armed with a firearm. And there were other counts. After the preliminary hearing, Mr. Lee filed a suppression motion, saying that the search of the vehicle, his Cadillac, was illegal. It was not a search conducted under the exceptions. The people made the argument that the automobile exception and the inventory search covered and made an exception to the warrant requirement under the Fourth Amendment. But the lower court agreed with Mr. Lee, stating that this was in fact an illegal search. And so now we're brought before the appellate court because the people, the state of California, took this case to the appellate level and we have two questions whether the search is legal under the automobile exception or inventory search so first let's take a look at the automobile exception as you can recall the fourth amendment protects you against unreasonable searches and seizures meaning that officers generally speaking need to have a warrant before they conduct a search but automobiles are a special category and there are many exceptions dealing with automobiles. Automobiles are subject to special exceptions because they're of their inherent mobility and diminished expectation of privacy given the public nature of automobile travel. Those are the two reasons that the Supreme Court said that people have less expectation of privacy in their vehicles. And in fact, I have a series of videos dealing with all of the exceptions to the warrant requirement as they relate to vehicular searches. So I encourage you to go back and watch that series on my YouTube channel. I will try to link it here above or in the information section under the video. So I encourage you to watch that. But first, let's focus on the automobile exception. When the police have probable cause to believe that a lawful stopped vehicle contains evidence of criminal activity or contraband, they may conduct a warrantless search of any area in the vehicle in which the evidence might be found. Now, probable cause is a more demanding standard than mere reasonable suspicion. Remember, all the officers need is reasonable suspicion to pull the vehicle over. But in order to search inside while relying on the automobile exception, they need to have probable cause. What is probable cause? Well, it exists where the known facts and circumstances are sufficient to warrant a man of reasonable prudence in the belief that contraband or evidence of a crime will be found. The state relies on a number of factors. They said that because Mr. Lee had marijuana in his pocket, he had the affirmative response to the officer when he asked if he was delivering marijuana and Mr. Lee said that he was a delivery driver. The fact that he had a wad of cash in his pocket, roughly 100, 200 bucks. 
the additional $10 in cash that was in the center console, and the manner in which he tensed up when the officer tried to handcuff him. That, the state says, provided probable cause that there would be more incriminating evidence inside the vehicle. But, as you can recall, in 2016, California permitted any adult over the age of 21 to legally possess up to 28.5 grams of marijuana, or one ounce. And the law explicitly states that cannabis and cannabis products involved in any way with conduct deemed lawful by this section are not contraband, nor subject to seizure, and no conduct deemed lawful by this section shall constitute the basis for detention, search, or arrest. Meaning that in order for us to be consistent with this California section, which is, by the way, is section 11, 362.1, subsection C, Lee's possession of small amount and legal amount of marijuana provides only scant support for an inference that the car would contain more contraband. And the court says that the other evidence relied by the people adds little to the calculus. Because, after all, so what that Mr. Lee tensed up when he was being handcuffed? It doesn't mean that there's going to be evidence of a crime inside the vehicle. And it doesn't add to, to the probable cause calculus. Now let's move on to the inventory search. So the appellate court says that the people and the police officers were incorrect when they relied on the automobile exception. But what about inventory search? After all, the officer told Mr. Lee that he was going to impound the vehicle, and that's why he started to search it. Well, when the vehicle is being impounded, or if the vehicle is in lawful possession or custody of the police, an officer may conduct a warrantless search aimed at securing or protecting the vehicle's content. The decision to impound the vehicle must be justified by the community caretaking functions, other than the suspicion of evidence of criminal activity, because inventory searches are conducted in the absence of probable cause. So remember, for the inventory searches, the officers don't need to have probable cause, but they do need to have a reason to look at the vehicle, and that reason better be the caretaking functions of the police. For example, impounding serves a community caretaking function when a vehicle is parked illegally, blocks traffic or passage, or stands at a risk of theft or vandalism. Also relevant to the caretaking inquiry is whether someone other than the defendant could remove the car to a safe location. Officers may not use the inventory search as a ruse for general ramaging in order to discover incriminating evidence. And here, the appellate court says that the people failed to show that the decision to impound Lee's vehicle served any sort of community caretaking function. The car was parked in and alongside an apartment complex. It was not blocking a roadway, a sidewalk, or a driveway. And Lee offered to have someone else come by and pick up the vehicle. And then, of course, we know the intent of the officers by the way they conducted themselves with Mr. Lee. Three times the officer asked Mr. Lee if there was something illegal in the vehicle. He never asked Mr. Lee whether there was anything valuable in the vehicle. After all, he's trying to inventory the items inside. And then, of course, he never actually filled out the inventory form when he was doing the search, which again shows that the intent was to find something illegal in the vehicle and not to actually inventory valuables. And then at the end of the day, we have Mr. Lee telling the officer that someone else can pick someone, uh, the vehicle up. 
And then the court also focuses where the officer was searching the vehicle. He was looking under the seats by actually lifting up the lower portion, the bench part of the seat, in order to look underneath. Well, no reasonable person puts valuables in that part of the vehicle. It is usually a place where somebody stashes illegal drugs or firearms or anything else that's incriminating or illegal. So we know the officer was trying to look for something that was incriminating and not actually inventorying valuables. Although the officer had statutory authority to impound Lee's vehicle after apprehending him for driving on a suspended license, that does not automatically render any impoundment in the subsequent inventory search constitutionally proper. And in this case, the appellate court says the inventory search was illegal, improper, because the officers were not actually doing any caretaking functions. Instead, they were just trying to find incriminating evidence. So because the search was not legal under the inventory search exception, nor the automobile exception, the appellate court says that the lower court was correct in suppressing the evidence against Mr. Lee and dismissing the case. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, subscribe, hit the bell notification button, so next time I post, you'll be first to know. And by the way, my new shirts are in. You can go on my website at lostash.com and purchase them. Thanks for watching.